Thanks for times now moved to memory. Thanks for Jesus by my side. Thanks for pleasant, balmy springtime. Thanks for dark and dreary fall. Thanks for tears by now forgotten. Thanks for peace within my soul. Thanks for what thou dost deny. Thanks for storms that I have weathered. Thanks for all thou dost supply. Thanks for pain and thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort in despair. Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. Thanks for roses by the wayside. Thanks for thorns their stems contain. Thanks for hopes and thanks for foresight. Thanks for hope and sweet refrain. Thanks for joy and thanks for sorrow. Thanks for heavenly peace with thee. Thanks for hope in the tomorrow. Thanks for all eternity. This is Thanksgiving month, and I wanted us to hear songs we might not have ever heard. All songs we've not heard in a long time. So I chose that hymn. It is a different Thanksgiving hymn. You are accustomed to singing now, Thank We All Our God, or Come Ye Thankful People Come, but you've probably never sung this text. And it's good for us to learn songs both old and new. I maintain nobody should go to heaven without having sung, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, a Bulwark Never Failing, Our Helper He Amid the Flood of Mortal Ills Prevailing. A mighty great text. Uh, so I uh, continue to argue for the inclusion of that which is old and that which is new. It is good for us. Well, good morning to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen, amen, amen. I'm Pastor Richard Allen Farmer. I have a few announcements for you. Uh, there is a pastor-led Bible study this coming Thursday evening via Zoom at 7 p.m. We'll be looking at Ezekiel chapter 7. If you'd like to be included in that Bible study, please call the church office for uh, the details for the login credentials. December 1 at midnight, Friday night, December 1 at midnight, I am calling the church to all-night prayer. I guess technically it's all, it's some of the morning prayer. Uh, we'll begin at midnight and pray through to 6 a.m. And then those of us who have not committed to uh, hanging the greens on Saturday the 2nd uh, will go to sleep. Uh, at 6 a.m. on Saturday the 2nd. Next Sunday, I'm going to offer, I think for the third time here, maybe in 10 years, a visual sermon on tithing. Uh, this will be life-changing for some of you. One of our members said to me after I did the last one, he said, I understand the concept of tithing, but now I really get it. I saw just what it means. Uh, so next Sunday I'm going to take 10 items of this, 10 items of that, and show you how you should spend it, how you should portion it out. And I need your help for that uh, sermon next Sunday. So I need someone to commit right now to bringing me 10 onions. And I'm going to call for them as part of the sermon. Somebody, one person, I need 10 onions from you. Thank you. Patience. Thank you. I need someone to bring me 10 bananas. 
Glenda? All right. And by the way, I leave these items on the table, and people may come up and get those things. And if people don't take all your onions, you are free to take them back home. <laughs> all right, Glenda Collins. I need 10 oranges. Barrow. Pat Bogus. All right. I need one large calendar. One large calen calendar. Calendar. I want to demonstrate the tithing of time. It doesn't matter, just as large as you can. A big calendar. Okay, Nancy Scott. I need can 10 cans of the same vegetable. Just find vegetable on sale. All right, Dell Grub. I see that hand. All right, doesn't matter what vegetable it is, but I need 10 of the same thing. I need 10 potatoes. Yes, Christiana Ashong. And I need 10 bottles of water or soft drink. All right. 10 bottles of something. They need to be all the same thing. 10 bottles of water, 10 bottles of Coke, whatever's on sale, whatever you got in your pantry. All right, Adlin. Operanta. We've got it, I thank you very much. Now, if you are on the grounds or even off the grounds this week, serving in some way, serving people, tithing your time, giving your time to other people. You were here at the packing party for Operation Christmas Child. You took someone to the doctor. You were here for a Bible study. If you are on the grounds or off the grounds, serving this week with your body, with your time, would you please stand? Ah. Now those of you who are standing, I want you to look around at how many are sitting. <laughs> and those of you who are sitting, I want you to look at those who are standing. We are called to be faithful stewards of our we, yes, you may be seated. Uh, we talk about the three T's. We are stewards of our time, our talent and our treasure, so our dollars, but also our calendar, our time. The way I spend my time and the way I spend my money will tell you what is most important to me. The way I spend my time and the way I spend my money will tell you what is important to me. Thank you very much. Those of you who have regularly given yourselves and given your time and giving your body. Some of you travel 30 and 40 minutes to get to this site to do ministry, to serve people, and I am deeply, deeply indebted to you for what you offer and for what you bring and for what you contribute to this ministry. Uh, Cleveland Robinson has some other emphases to give us. He will not read all the announcements. I'm expecting you'll do that. Amen. I'm reading them all. <laughs> Every last one of them. Oh my In its entirety. <laughs> if we have guests visiting us in our sanctuary this morning or via social media, we want to say good morning to you. Certainly, it's without arrogance that we say that. We were expecting you. At Crossroads, we are always expecting guests. And to my Crossroads family, good morning, good morning, and good morning. I hadn't said that in about a few months, so I really enjoy saying it. In fact, I'm going to say it again. Good morning. I, I, I do have a few brief announcements, and I, I'll make them brief. I don't ever like insulting uh, the congregation by reading all of the announcements when you can certainly read them in the heart lines, but I do want to hit upon them. The worship service on the 19th, which was on our overhead, will start at 12 noon, uh, followed by the pastor's celebration, which will end at 2.30. So we all have service that day from 12 to 2.30. That'll be a special day for some and a long day for others. <laughs> 
I'm just saying. <laughs> Christmas flowers. <laughs> Crossroads will be ordering poinsettias to help decorate the sanctuary during the celebration of, of the birth of the Savior, Jesus Christ. If you would like to participate by purchasing a poinsettia, you can do this and take it home after Christmas. If you are interested in this, please consult Burl Lindsay. The poinsettias will cost $13 each. There are some forms in our North Dex if you choose to be a part of that. Food distribution next Saturday, November the 11th, beginning at 9 a.m. Volunteers are needed. Please come and help. You can contact Sandy Lewis or John Matthews for more information. There will be an Ursha's meeting, immediately following worship service on the 12th, which would be next week. All Ursha's are asked to attend a meeting in room 22 across from the youth room. Please make every effort to be there. And I'm gonna emphasize that. Please make every effort to be there, which means you really need to be there. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> traveling to the pastor's farewell event. If you need a ride or can provide a ride on November 18th for the farewell event for the pastor farmer, please let Nina and our office, our church office know that by the 14th so she can make arrangement. That's for those people who may need a ride or those individuals who can offer a ride and that will give her ample time to uh, set a schedule. So I'm going to ask that you will please govern yourselves accordingly on that. Attention, choir. There will not be practice after service today, but there will be a rehearsal on Thursday, November 9th at 7 p.m. Please spread the word to members who of the choir or new members who may not be here. And one last announcement. At the end of your, of our, chairs that look like pews. There is a, uh, our attendance book. We, we, we stopped doing that for a while. We recently started back signing our attendance in. That's both, both guests and members. And uh, if doing our offering, you would get that attendance book and deposit it once it's signed to your left, you'll pass it down to your right, it'll be placed at the end seat. And if we have any problem with that, during that time, we have our urchins to kind of get us squared away on that. All right? We'll now have our call to worship, if you would stand with me. It will be located on our overheads. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. To the one who remembered, who remembered us in our lowest state. His love endures forever. And we'll, now now, we're, we'll now have our opening hymn. So this hymn is all about thanks. But we're thanking our Redeemer. He remembered us in our lowest state. And he provided a way of redemption for us. A way out of no way. Because we, in our sins, could not save ourselves. This is a text 
that dares us to give thanks for everything. We're going to give thanks for the dark times and the good times. Andre Crouch wrote, I thank you for my problems. If I'd never had a problem, I would not know that God could solve them. We give thanks even for the most horrific things because out of those events and things, we grow. We are pushed to evaluate who we are and where we stand with God. As you sing this text, find a way to be thankful for all things and in all things. Stanza two. Thanks for prayers that thou hast answered. Thanks for what thou dost deny. Thanks for storms that I have weathered. Thanks for all the dust of God. Thanks for pain and thanks for pleasure. Thanks for comfort in despair. Thanks for grace that none can measure. Thanks for love beyond compare. Thanks for roses by the wayside. Thanks for storms the sense contain. Thanks for hopes and thanks for thyself. Thanks for hope that sweet refrain. Thanks for joy and thanks for sorrow. Thanks for take a seat, please do so. If not, remain standing for our prayer of confession. Our prayer of confession is a prayer. So I'm going to ask that you read it over meditatively, quickly, and I'll be so honored to lead you. Gracious God, we confess that we often take you and your loving kindness for granted. We underestimate how much we fall short of living in a way that honors you and overestimate our ability to fix ourselves, even if we try hard. Only you can set us free from our brokenness and its consequences and all by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, perfect sacrifice. We submit ourselves to you so that you can transform us day by day through the power of your Holy Spirit. And the people of God said, amen. amen. I'm going to ask you to just take a silent moment and confess to your Savior. and insurance of pardon. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus, excuse me, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. People of God said amen to that. We'll now have our songs of praise. So. We aren't starting to praise God now. We've been praising him since we got here, I hope. But let's sing this song. It's called a new song, but it's familiar to us. And Oh, 
witnessing the power of the cross. It's by the power of the cross that we are able to be free from our sins and come to celebrate communion today.
while we are giving thanks for those of you who have been such faithful stewards of your time and your talents, I should have read a card I got from our mostly housebound member, Lanice Fryer. Thank you, Pastor Farmer and Crossroads Church, for giving us the opportunity to prepare Christmas boxes for children around the world. It is a joy to participate in doing God's work. Mrs. Joanne Johnson, Mrs. Fryer's friend and neighbor, is a blessing to our church in many ways. This year, her sister and husband, Mr. and Mrs. Ra, I guess that is right, Ross maybe, and Mary Smith, together we filled 61 boxes. So you can do ministry from home. You can serve at home. You don't even have to come out here. But I need you to step up. If a housebound woman can recruit her neighbors and participate in Operation Christmas Child, so can you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We go to prayer. So many, many things to pray about. I want to add to the prayer list Tony Webb. He is the husband of Millie Falk Webb, who is a friend of this congregation. She comes to many uh, morning worship services and she is online on Zoom uh, many Thursday nights. We've been asked to pray for a husband who's undergoing treatment for multiple myeloma and is preparing for a two-week hospital stay and for a stem cell transplant. Tony Webb, let us pray for him and add him to our prayer list. You see in your heart lines the names of those for whom we are regularly praying. We pray for them every week, very often naming them, and asking God to meet them where they are. Let us pray. We are here, God, and we thank you for the simple ability to show up and to be in person at this worship experience. You have already met us in the singing of songs, in our prayers of confession, our embrace of the assurance of pardon. We have already been moved to think of thee and where we stand with thee. We counted our joy to bring before you not only our requests, but our expressions of thanks. Thank you, Lord, for breath. Thank you, Lord, for legs that carry us, some moving more slowly than they have in years past, but they're still moving. Thank you, Lord, for transportation so we could get here. We're not driving the newest of cars, but we have transportation, and we thank you. Thank you, God, for each other. We need to be together. We are greatly encouraged when we 
see each other. We are made to smile when we see people we have come to know and love over these last months and years. Thank you for the body, for the family of believers. Thank you, God, for something in us that makes us want to worship, for spiritual hunger, for spiritual curiosity. We give you thanks for a thirst for you. We say thank you. And for that which you have provided so that we could come to know you better, we praise you for Bible study, <coughs> for Christian education in all its forms. We bless your name. We praise you. We also petition you. We also request your attention to these whose names are listed. We add Tony Webb, ask you to fit him for this medical journey he's going to endure. We pray for Jarvis Hall and Henry Stevens and Edward and Uvalin Patterson, for Rosa Crowley and John Gregory. We are bold to pray and ask your blessing on them, touching their bodies, touching their minds and hearts. For Kim English and Jewel Walker and Eason Simon, we are bold to pray. Meet them on the level of their need, we pray. We pray for Dave and Joy Fours in the passing of their daughter, Karen Fours Brown. Pray that you would comfort them. No one expects to bury their own children. They expect their children to bury them. Oh God of mercy, oh God of comfort, we pray for Karen's family, for her sisters, for her husband, and for her parents, that you would sustain we pray for Anna Clark and Lisa Lauer and Anne-Marie Tillman. We give you thanks for the attention that Isaac Wood is getting by his doctors and pray that you would deliver him from depression and disappointment connected with his medical condition we pray for Denise and Roger as they walk with Isaac through his journey. We pray for Lenise Fryer. Thank you for her finding a way to be involved while not being physically here. We pray for our seasoned saints that they might not say or think all oh, leave the ministry to the young people. They can handle it. I'm tired. I pray that you'd give energy to your people of every age, that we may serve you until we can't, that we may give ourselves on some level until you call us home. We pray for Michael Hairston and Brenda Dolson and Jacqueline Huggins. For all that you are doing, we say thank you. For our partners in global and domestic mission, we praise you. We pray that you continue to meet their needs and thank you for using us to fulfill part of their financial need. 
we count it a privilege to give as unto you that we might share dollars with these missionaries. God, you have been so faithful to us, and we have not always been faithful to thee. Great is thy faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Your compassion does not fail. Help us to rise to the challenge of being your people set ablaze by your calling. May we do what we do with excellence and with passion until you call us. We ask all these things in the strong name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, and coming King. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us remain in prayer mode. I have so much to give thanks for this morning. I, I just can hardly hold it in. Operation Christmas Child's annual shoebox party was yesterday. Operation Christmas Child is an organization that sends these shoeboxes that are filled with hygiene, school supplies, toys, and clothes all over the world. And when the children come to the party to receive their shoebox, they hear the gospel. Um, all year after these boxes are processed, um, starting in de late December, these boxes go out all over the world. And I'm very, very thankful to say that Crossroads is sending 800 gospel opportunities. I am also giving thanks for 66 people that showed up to fill boxes, to help us set up on Friday night. And that number includes 41 visitors to Crossroads. So that's fantastic, and I love it. Um, I am thankful for the men's group that showed up and helped us with the harder work, um, both Friday night and Saturday. I am really thankful for a bunch of new people who responded to a call earlier this week, um, this year, and um, so I am going to ask them to stand up first. Uh, Betty, Dorothy Haynes, um, Ruth Cosby, and her daughter Valerie, who is not here. Um, okay, these are the brand who. Oh, she's in the booth. There's Valerie. Hey. So I'm very thankful for these guys. Um, I can't tell you how much they help with the sorting and the prep work this year. Um, if you did anything for Operation Christmas Child, if you've given me a check, if you've been praying, if you made a shoebox at home, thank you, Lenise, for your 40 boxes. That's amazing. Thank you, Veronica, for your 10 boxes that um, came in on Friday. We are just really grateful for all that. But if you've had anything to do with Operation Christmas Child this season, would you please stand up just for a minute? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Aiden, too. Yes, lots of people. It's really wonderful. Um, we created some new positions. Um, Betty did a lot of this and organized a lot of the sorting and prep work. Susan became our in-house box inspector. So that was a new thing and a lot of fun. And I'm thankful that people were willing to flex with that. Um, also, another new thing that Susan is in charge of is our shopping team, which really starts in January and goes until we have our Operation Christmas Child if, um, party in November. If you're interested in being on that, just talk to Susan, and she'll put you on an email chain or a phone chain to get that stuff. Um, 
two last things. One, um, the you can still turn in boxes if you took one home um, until next Sunday, and then they're going to the to the processing center. And if you want to contribute to postage, it's ten dollars per box. That includes postage, customs fees, all kinds of all the workers at the processing center and that kind of stuff. So that's why it's ten dollars. And you can write a check to Samaritan's Purse and then give it to me or Susan or Nina um, because next week I won't be here. I have to go to a funeral. Sorry about that. But anyway, so I want to invite Susan up to pray for us. Um, if anybody else wants to come pray for and put your hand on a box and pray with us, you are welcome to do it. Yes, yes, please. Thank you. Sophia packed a bunch. so She did. She enjoyed it. So if you want to physically lay hands on a box, feel free. Um, but otherwise, you can just mentally lay hands yeah. on a box. Yeah, come on up if you want. This is something we do at the warehouse, too. When you actually, there are, um, if you're interested in working at... If you're interested in working at the processing center, we have a few, we used to call it the warehouse, but we've retrained ourselves. Um, it's going to be in Kennesaw this year. Sorry. Um, we, we, we are trying to see who wants to go, and we have a few slots, and we could probably get more. But um, just let Sharon or me or Nina know. You can call the office. And we'll try to match what you can do with what's available. But it is wonderful to work there. We have been really spoiled because it's usually on the east side of town. And last year it was on Mountain Industrial <laughs> in Stone Mountain. So this year we get to go to Kennesaw. But you get to look through the boxes. You help make sure they've got in them what they need and um, get them cartonized and ready to send out. But let's... Um, there, it's going to be, there are different dates starting around Thanksgiving, and we've got... The dates are um, November 30th from 3 to 7, and the... Um, December 1st. December 1st from... I, don't I forgot the time. It's in the afternoon. Yeah, it is. <laughs> One to something. Anyway, sorry. But those are the two dates. So. Do we still have the 16th if it happens? Yes, if, and December 16th. Do we have a date on December 16th, but some years the processing's all done by then. So let's pray. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for providing these boxes and their contents. We thank you for the churches in various countries who are ready to receive them and to reach out to their neighbors by giving out the boxes and sharing the gospel and following up with classes to, uh, for discipleship. Um, we pray that you would start new churches as a result of these boxes that go out, that you would take people who have a vague knowledge of you and turn them into true disciples, that you would take people who've never heard of you and draw them to yourself and turn them also into disciples, and that all of them would spread the word to their friends and their neighbors and even people far away from them so that your word will go forth to all the earth, all the peoples of the earth, and you will be glorified as a result and people will be saved, and we will have more and more brothers and sisters. The children, their parents, their neighbors, their siblings, we pray that you, the impact of each of these boxes would be very mighty, and that you would guide each box to the right child, that we hear stories of just amazing stories from people who've received boxes about something they'd always wanted, and they got the exact thing that they needed or wanted. They got shoes in the right size. They got a doll that looked just like they'd always wanted. And you can do that. And you can show yourself. And these people can know that you love them. We do not have a special knowledge or a special corner on being loved by you. You love everyone and you are calling people to yourself from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And we are honored that you can use a humble shoebox 
and stuff we bought from Dollar Tree to reach out and do that work. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Crossroads, all of you know who are members that on the first Sunday is Family Sunday at Crossroads, and we do a couple of things. We participate in, in communion together, and we do some housekeeping chores, such as reaffirming our Apostles' Creed as a family and reaffirming our affirmations. They're going to be located on our overhead, starting with our Apostles' Creed. If you would stand with me, please. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now we will reaffirm our affirmations and what we believe in here. Who are we, Crossroads? We are the people of God. Why do we exist as a church? To love God and to worship him. To love and to care for one another. To share the joy and the struggles of growing as a community, seeking to bring glory to his name. Why are we here? We are here to joyfully worship and serve the Lord. To share the message of Jesus, the gospel, with all who are here, through lives that demonstrate his love, mercy, justice, in all our relationships, in our community, in our nation, in our world. Crossroads, how can we be such a community? By deciding to follow Jesus and to make a daily decision to live our work today. By earnestly studying his word, and seeking to value what God values and to practice the principles found in his word. Crossroads, for the glory of God, let us live like this in the people Amen. of God. Amen. Amen. If you're visiting the Crossroads Church for the very first time in a morning worship service, would you please stand where you are? If you're here in the sanctuary for the first time, in a morning worship service, would you please stand where you are? No first timers? None? I'm gonna make sure I haven't overlooked anybody. I'm looking all the way to the right, all the way to the left. All right. If you're visiting with us for the first time online, we are delighted that you're with us. Would you please put in the chat uh, where you're visiting from, what country, what city, what state, we'd love to know that. And would you please drop an email to me today? Put in the subject line, was with you for the first time online. I'd be delighted to receive that. And if you send that email today, I will respond to you today. And you'll send that email to my personal email box, and it is Richard Allen Farmer, 1951 at gmail.com. Again, that's Richard Allen Farmer, and the Allen is spelled A-L-L-E-N, Richard Allen Farmer, 1951, at gmail.com. You got that address, Sam? Yeah. Got that? I'm, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. It is offering time, and we are delighted to present our gifts to the Lord for the Lord's work. Perhaps you've given online, perhaps you've authorized a bank draft, perhaps you brought 
a check by the building this week. If you'd like to give this morning, you may drop your offering in the plate in the front. And we thank you for your faithful giving to the Lord's work. Would you please stand and with offering in hand or anything in your hand that represents your stewardship, your giving of yourselves to God, let us pray together. God the giver, we thank you for these resources that you have entrusted to us. As we give, we do so with grateful hearts, with cheerfulness return a portion of your gifts. Apostles Church may care for the financial distress, spread the gospel to the nations, address economic and political injustices, create and sustain ministries that develop disciples of Jesus Christ. As we give, we pray that you, Holy God, will teach us how to give. May our motives be pure, our hearts be glad, and our hands be open. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. again we come to thank you for your grace and mercy for we know by that grace and mercy you have afforded us one more opportunity to give back a small portion of what you've given to us and for that we say thank you thank you now father god we ask that you would bless these orphans for the edification of your kingdom and the people of god said amen, amen.
If you're able, would you please stand for the reading of the scripture text. The sermon text is one verse. It is so short that I'm going to read it twice. So you can get it. Many of you have memorized Romans 12, 1. Hear the word of the Lord. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Holy God, speak, we pray, and may we who have ears hear what the Spirit says to the church. Amen. Amen. The word therefore is used a number of times in Romans. In fact, any time you see the word therefore, uh, someone has quipped, when you read therefore, find out what it's there for. <laughs> Normally it is a continuation of an argument or a teaching as the writer propels us forward four of the more important therefores in the book of Romans, and there are many of them, but four of the more important ones, I want you to just take a trip with me uh, through Romans, uh, are the following. Four therefores in Romans. The therefore of condemnation. It's in 2, chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O humanity, whoever you are, who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things, the therefore of condemnation. There is the therefore of justification. Chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a great therefore. Amen. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. There is the therefore of assurance. Chapter 8, verse 1. All these therefores are in the first verses of these chapters. The therefore of assurance. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore... Now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, that'll preach. I don't care who you are. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And the therefore, fourthly, of dedication, which takes us to our text for today. I beseech you, therefore... Brethren, that is, in light of all that I have written up to this point, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. This is such a radical idea, a living sacrifice. Normally, a sacrifice is an animal that is going to be killed. Now, it is living when we put it on the altar, but the goal of the ritual is to kill the animal 
and sacrifice it to God. The animal to be sacrificed is alive when placed on the altar, but dead by the end of the ritual. But this sacrifice to which Paul invites the Christians in Rome is to be the sacrifice of a human animal that remains alive after being on the altar. That's not been done before. In fact, someone has said, the only problem with a living sacrifice is that it can keep crawling down off the altar. <laughs> but here, Paul dares, challenges, invites, beseeches, begs Roman believers to picture themselves as animals and get up on the altar and present your body. Not to be killed, but to live for God. I heard about a youth pastor who said to his young people, how many of you would be willing to die for God? So many hands went up. He said, then how come you won't live for him? This is what Paul is suggesting. It's easy to raise your hand and say, I'll die. But let me give you a radical thought. Climb up on the altar and sacrifice yourself as if you're going to die. But live for him. Don't die for him. Live for him. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now the language here alternates between death and life, alive and dead. For instance, according to Romans chapter 6, we're just going to find out what Paul said before the therefore. In Christ Jesus, in Romans 6, we put the old person to death. When we say yes to Jesus Christ, we say goodbye to the old person we were with all our selfish desires, with all our meanness, with all our rebellion. We put the old person to death, dead. The new person in Christ, while dead to the old life, is alive to God, Romans 6, 11. So you're dead on purpose. You say goodbye to the old life. You put the old person to death and you become alive in Christ. Now a new person. Then the new person in Christ is to, by giving him or herself constantly to God, is to die daily to self and to a self-centered agenda. So we are both dead and alive, dead to the old person, alive in Jesus Christ, and in Jesus Christ, dying daily to self that we might live to God. Hmm. We are both dead and alive. Uh, the late Warren Wearsby, who in my opinion, was one of the finest Bible expositors who have lived in the 20th century, said that in the Bible, there are two living sacrifices. There was Isaac, who was going to die on the altar that God provided, had not God provided the ram in the bush. Isaac was a living sacrifice, or was about to be. And Jesus the Christ, who gave himself on the cross and whose death we will observe and celebrate this morning in the communion moment. This act of radically presenting ourselves has at least three aspects to it. It is a holy act. 
to give oneself to God. I was raised, as you know, in a fairly traditional Baptist church in the Bronx, New York. When we spoke of other traditions, especially the Pentecostal tradition, we talked about the holiness church. I'm really sorry that we use that language because it suggests those people are given to holiness and we are given to being Baptists. And the truth is, every believer, regardless of the denomination to which you subscribe, every believer who has said yes to Jesus Christ is called to be holy. This is a holiness church. This is a church in which we preach the scriptures and we present Jesus and we give people an opportunity to grow in their faith. This is a holiness church. We preach holiness here. We preach living a distinctive life here. This is a holiness church. And this is what Paul says about giving oneself. It is a holy act. It is a, a consecrated act. It is a pure act. It is that which we use to set ourselves apart. Look at the text again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, holy. We, we are a holy people. This act of radically presenting ourselves has at least three attributes. It is holy. It is acceptable to God. If you do it correctly, when you present yourself to God, it is acceptable. Well-pleasing might be a, 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 the sense of the word. Pleasant. It pleases God when we present ourselves to God. And the text says, there are three attributes here. It is holy. It is acceptable to God. It's reasonable. You hear people say, uh, especially of believers who are serious about their faith, it don't take all that. You don't have to do all that. In fact, I'm, I'm very concerned about people who unite with a congregation and then they don't do anything. They're just parasites. They, they suck services and goods out of the church, but they, they never give themselves. They're not logical. The Greek word here for reasonable is logikos, and it's, it's the word from which we get the word logical. It is the, Paul says, this giving of oneself, this presenting of the body is the rational thing to do in light of what I've written before the therefore. In light of what I've told you about Jesus, it is reasonable, rational, logical for you to climb up on the altar and present your bodies. This is not outrageous. This is reasonable. I go back to that youth pastor. If you're willing to make all these grand statements about how you die for God, why, why won't you live for him? Why won't you do the reasonable thing and give yourself in service and ministry and present yourself to God and use that body which he gave you as an instrument of ministry? Wow. Now, what does this mean for believers today living in Stone Mountain, Lithonia, Grayson, Loganville? What does it mean for a person living in Stonecrest? What does this text have to do with me, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. May I tell you? This, this is an urging for us all to live in what I want to call presentation mode all the time. I was at P.F. Chang's a couple of nights ago, and... I received my food and I commented to the waiter, the presentation is lovely. So I not only want to eat good food, I want it to look good. 
I, I want the chef to be in presentation mode. Don't just slap it onto the plate. Make it visually appealing. And here's what Paul says. You should live in presentation mode all the time. You should be presenting yourselves to God all the time. You should be giving your body daily to God's purposes. You should be signing over your mind to God every day. You should be presenting your attitude to God every day that he might fix it and use it and help you not to go off on somebody today. We should be in presentation mode every day. Now, we consumer-oriented believers are eager to have God present something to us every day. Give me a blessing. Bless me. Give me this. Give me that. But in this text, Paul urges us to present something to God. I urge you, brothers and sisters, and you can only do this by the mercies of God, present yourselves, your body, your soma, but also your mind, your spirit, your psyche. Present everything you are to God every day. Wow. This is radical. You mean my entire self? God wants it all? Yes. I heard about a guy who was part of a country church and they did their baptisms by immersion in a river near their church building. And the guy was going to be baptized. He had on his robe and everything. He stepped in the water. And he, then he remembered that his wallet was in his pants and he didn't want to get that wet. So he started to hand it to his wife. The preacher said, oh no, we baptized the wallet too. Come on, let's go. God wants it all. We give ourselves to God. We want to give him everything but the wallet. Everything but the body. Everything but our attitude. But what would happen if you gave him everything? and asked him to use it for his purposes. What would happen if we ourselves became living sacrifices and offered ourselves? Oh, it's a holy act. It is an acceptable act. It is a logical, rational, rational reasonable act given what God has done and given who God is. I got to quit. We want to go to the table and remember Jesus. Vincent's word studies offers a quote from one of the early church fathers, Chrysostom. He was the Archbishop of Constantinople. Listen to what John Chrysostom said. How can the body become a sacrifice? Let the eye look on no evil, and it is a sacrifice. Let the tongue utter nothing base, and it is an offering. Let the hand work no sin, and it is a holocaust. But more this suffices not. But besides, we must actively exert ourselves for good. The hand giving alms, the mouth blessing them that curse us, the ear ever at leisure for listening to God. End of quote. Beloved, Romans 12, 1 is a call to holiness. And we are a holiness church. Paul issues this exhortation in light of God's mercies. Let me give you just two action steps. Let us evaluate our worship 
and honestly ask ourselves if we are presenting ourselves daily to God. Let us regularly ask that question. Am I giving myself to God? Am I presenting my body and my whole being to God? Second action step, application step. Let us ask ourselves if what we offer to God is reasonable. Some of us offend God by how little we give him. And I'm not speaking of dollars only, although if you're tipping God with $5 a week, shame on you. But am I doing that which is reasonable, that which is within my capability? Am I giving God reasonable service, logical, rational service, given what I have, given my resources of time, talent, and treasure? Am I offering to God that which is reasonable? On this Communion Sunday, let us praise him who presented his body, who did not crawl down from the cross, but who stayed there and died that we might live. I, I wish you could have heard the preachers I heard in my youth. Oh, when they preached, some of them had no formal education, but they loved God and loved the word of God. And when they preached, oh, oh my, be enough to make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I can still remember them. Some of these, these old preachers. You, you got to hear a 90-year-old preacher before you die. You, you got you to hear one because those guys, they, they preached out of a life full of walking with God. I heard some of them, and there's more than one of them, but I heard them describing the death of Jesus. And they, they would, they'd rear back and they'd say, and he died. Didn't he die? He died until the moon and sun started hemorrhaging. He died until saints from ages past had to get up and walk around. He died. And I, by the time they finished this recurring phrase, he died. I heard one preacher say, he died until death was put to death. He died that we might live. Now you, I know you would die for God. But would you present yourselves living sacrifices and live for him? That is infinitely harder. Let us pray. God of Mary, God of Isaac, God of Philip, God of John, God of Lydia, God of the church, God of saints in ages past, God of our present, God of our future, we thank you for this radical invitation, exhortation, this dare from Paul. We confess that we have not daily given ourselves to you, but we want to. Help us as we respond to your word to do that which is reasonable, rational. 
in light of your sacrifice, O Christ, may we sacrifice ourselves again and again, daily, dying to self that we might live unto righteousness. It is our prayer in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to ask the Reverend Gregory to join me at the table. So if you haven't been here for communion in a while, um, we have started having communion where you come up here to get your elements. There'll be ushers with gloves on and they will hand you the elements on either side. So the first row will come up, go back to your seats. From then on, you come in, come up, go over there to the bowl and drop your communion cup and then circle around and come back to your seat, please. Yes, I, mean, I don't circle the whole sanctuary. No, no, they'll let whole rows go. So one will come, this side will come this way, and this side will come this way, and you will go down there and drop your cup and then return to your seats. Does that make sense? Yeah, that was better, sorry. All right. Beloved. Oh, sorry. Okay, if you do not feel comfortable presenting yourself up here for communion today um, and need the kit that has the communion wafer and the cup in it, if you'll raise your hand, one of the ushers will get one to you. Anybody? Okay. Thank you. This bread represents the body of our Lord Christ who gave himself and who put death to death, who sacrificed himself and allowed himself to be torn and bruised and speared and spit upon that we might live. This cup represents the blood of Christ poured out for sinful men and women, boys and girls. He did not come down from the cross but stayed there until life's fluid, the blood, was drained from his body. Father, we thank you for the body of Jesus. We thank you for his life, his teaching, his example. We thank you for the blood of Jesus which has never lost its power to save, to heal, to transform. <clears throat> we thank you that in Jesus Christ, all our stains of sin are washed away. How we thank you for the precious body and blood of Jesus. As we receive these elements, in your mercy, O oh God, help us to see them afresh, anew. Amen. Will the ushers come forward?
sorry, we're missing people. We usually have four people up. Okay, we got it.
Has everybody else come up that wants to come up? Thanks. We leave this place saying of this Christ, glory to his name. Down to the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. If you're able, would you please stand? singing oh singing glory only to him what a precious name singing precious name oh man Precious name, singing glory to His name. Precious name, oh, there to my heart was the blood of life. Singing glory to His name, oh, precious power that saves from sin. Precious name, singing glory. I love the name, oh, there to my heart 
Does the blood of life only to me? We're in glory to His name. Oh, sing in glory to His name. Come on, talk about the blood. Talk about the blood. There to my heart was the blood of God. Sing it, sing it. Beloved, I send you forth in the name of the one whose name is glorious. Glory to his name. I send you in the name of the one who gave himself as a sacrifice for sins that were not his own. I send you forth in the name of the one who died in your places, who took the punishment we should have borne, and who laid on himself all the outrage and rebellion that was ours. I send you forth in the name of the one who died that we might live. Go forth this week and live for him who died for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and grant you his peace. The Lord be gracious to you in your going out and your coming in, in your work and in your leisure. May you keep running into the Lamb of God. And may you be different because you know him. Amen.